first person I'd like to invite to the microphone is somebody who actually lived in a house that was on the land that we call People's Park now. He's gone on to become a civil rights attorney, activist. He was one of the founding members of the Berkeley Police Review Commission. He's been fighting a good fight for, for many decades. Join me in welcoming Mr. Jim Chin. Is that better? Okay, so um, yes, uh, uh, when I was 20 years old, I took an F bus from San Francisco in uh, 1967. Uh, at that time, the F bus let me off at Durant and Shattuck. I dragged all my belongings looking for a place, and I saw a place on Dwight and Regent. Um, and it was $49 a month, so it was right price for me. Um, and I moved in um, in uh, September, June, August of 1967. Um, in December, I got an eviction notice from the University of California at Berkeley. At that time, I was a student at Cal, and it was in the middle of final exams. So I went to university, I was a naive kid then, not a lawyer or anything, and I went down there and said, you know, why are you evicting me in the middle of final exams? And they said, well, we paid for a study that shows there are no students living in your house. I said, did that study include knocking on the door? Because our, about three quarters of the kids in our place were students. So that was my welcome to the University of California. Um, the place uh, after I was evicted, uh, the house wasn't torn down for about six or seven more months. It was 2523 Dwight Way. And then uh, after it was torn down, it became a giant mud hole. And it was called the People's Parking Lot. And if you park too close to this pond in the middle, because all the rain with the, which they had at that time, they actually had rain then, um, then your car would slip into the pond and, and your car would, would, would have to be towed or something. So anyway, um, in April of 1969, like a year and three quarters after I was evicted, the place had stood there forever, and uh, some people decided to start People's Park. And uh, I was there at that time, and almost immediately, within days, the university started uh, putting up uh, no trespassing signs, and uh, you could tell something was coming. So at that time, I had a part-time job on the waterfront, and one day I went down to work on the waterfront while I was a student, and I saw like hundreds of highway patrol cars coming over the hill, University, over the ramp there under 80. 80 runs under it. And I waited, there were like 200 of them. And I waited and I made a U-turn and followed them up to People's Park. I don't know how they did it because this was before the internet, before computers, before cell phones. I didn't even have a landline, but somehow 10,000 people were at uh, Sproul Plaza on May 15th, uh, 1969, uh, uh, for the noon rally. And, um, and uh, we started a march down Telegraph Avenue um, after the rally, and there were thousands of people. And uh, within five minutes, I was hit by a tear gas grenade, some plastic thing that blew up in my face and I was knocked to the ground and the free clinic helped me get back and I, went, I continued the march. And we got to the park and uh, they called the San Francisco tax squad, the Contra Costa County tax squad, the Alameda County tax squad, the Oakland police, the San Francisco police. I don't know how many police were there, but it wasn't working. So then the Alameda County sheriffs uh, got uh, shotguns, um, which they could pick any kind of bullet they wanted out of this bullet uh, truck they had. Some of them chose 
uh, rock salt or double or uh, uh, number nine or, or whatever it is, the lowest grade of bird shot. Some of them chose double aught buckshot. And James Rector was hit that day with double aught buckshot and he died. Um, and he wasn't even at the demonstration. He was just watching from a house uh, down the street. And, um, and then um, I started running uh, when I realized they were shooting people. And uh, I think I got shot because I felt this like slap in my back, but it wasn't with what was shot by James Rector to this day. I don't even know what it was. Um, and I went back to my house and we prepared uh, for a long struggle, which is still going on today. That's right. And so um, uh, the, uh, um, the, the demonstration went on and on and on, and there was ultimately a march with 20, 30,000 people that went past People's Park. And, um, and then uh, the, the fence went up and stayed up for several years. And one day there was another demonstration and people literally tore the fence down and cut up the concrete on the parking lot on the west side of the park. And that was a big day. Um, and uh, I have a souvenir from that, which I won't describe on TV. And so um, you, now it, then it became People's Park again. And uh, in 1991 or two, they formed a uh, committee uh, called the Use Committee, and I was appointed by Maudel Shirek. Anyone remember her? Great woman. Yeah, Maudel. And uh, and there were nine people appointed by the university, and uh, we um, we made it clear uh, there was some unity with the university people, which caused them to end the uh, Use Committee in 1996 uh, because uh, they they could tell that there wasn't going to be a vote to get rid of the park on our committee even though there were employees of the university made up half the committee um, so then it went on some more um, they they allowed the homeless uh, to live there uh, with occasional rouse um, if a homeless person uh, set up their stuff um, right here they'd be out in two minutes but it suited the university's interest to make people's park look bad because it was quote unquote dirty and people don't like it and and you know there are people on the left who don't like it and they don't realize they're being manipulated by the university so on Sunday I got this in the in the in the on the porch. Um, People's Park was declared a national landmark. <laughs> and speaking for myself, uh, the University of California Berkeley was the biggest organizer of the left in my day than anyone, okay? Than anyone. I mean, the SDS tried to organize whatever, but what the university did on a weekly basis during that time, the Third World Strike, uh, the Eldridge Cleaver class, they radicalized me. So anyway, keep on the struggle. It never will end. That's right. It never will end. What I'm talking about happened uh, 55 years ago and 55 years from now if i'm not here i hope some of you are still here trying to save people's park and trying to do the right thing thank you yeah. thank you so much sir.